Hello, thank you for joining me today. We've been reading through A Course in Miracles, The Daily Lessons, and today we're on a focus lesson. What is the ego? The ego is idolatry, the sign of limited and separated self born in a body, doomed to suffer and to end its life in death. It is the will that sees the will of God as enemy and takes a form in which it is denied. The ego is the proof that strength is weak and love is fearful. Life is really death and what opposes God alone is true. The ego is insane. In fear, it stands beyond the everywhere, apart from all, in separation from the infinite. In its insanity, it thinks it has become a victor over God himself. In it, its terrible autonomy, it sees the will of God as has been destroyed. It dreams of punishment and trembles at the figures in its dreams. Its enemies who seek to murder it before it can ensure its safety by attacking them. The son of God is egoless. What can he know of madness and the death of God when he abides in him? What can he know of sorrow and of suffering when he lives in eternal joy? What can he know of fear and punishment, of sin and guilt, of hatred and attack, when all there is surrounding him is everlasting peace, forever conflict-free and undisturbed in deepest silence and tranquility? To know reality is not to see the ego and its thoughts, its works, its acts, its laws, and its beliefs, its dreams, its hopes, its plans for its salvation, and the cost belief in it entails. In suffering, the price for faith in it is so immense that crucifixion of the Son of God is offered daily at its darkened shrine, and blood must flow before the altar where it is its sickly followers prepare to die. Yet will only one lily of forgiveness change the darkness into light, the altar to allusions to the shrine of life itself, and peace will be restored forever to the holy minds which God created as his son, his dwelling place, his joy, his love, completely his, completely one with him. So uh, this is very specific about the ego, and uh, it's, it's uh, very clear. Um, let me see if I can add a little clarity to it for you. So the body is separate from who we are. The body is our housing, and the body has wiring that makes it work. And the ego is a part of the wiring of the housing. And so this is why it's important to understand the separation between you, the essence of who you are, and your body. Because you are not your body, you inhabit your body. Most people, because we don't know this, our bodies are, end up running our lives because we are unaware of the separation. We're unaware of the fact that the ego is a part of the body, which is a part of the housing. It's designed to keep us, the ego in the body is designed to keep the body safe, keep, keep it protected, right? And the ego is fearful of everything that it perceives would harm the body. And so that's why it says the ego is insane. It's not insane in and of itself, but it's insane when it's thinking about us because we are not the body. And so the ego is trying to protect the body but we're just inhabiting the body. We're just using the body as our housing so that we can have this physical experience. 
We aren't the body. And that's where the insanity comes from, is this forgetting and this not knowing. So we, our spirits, are egoless. When it says the son of God is egoless, that's all of us because we are all the sons and daughters of God. And so ultimately, we, without the help of the ego, wouldn't know anything about fear or punishment or sin or guilt, hatred, attack. These are all constructs of the ego. They're not constructs of spirit. Spirit has no use for any of those things. So I hope you have a great day with this today. There will also be a daily lesson to go with it. Uh, in this new module, focus module. So uh, stay tuned for that. And uh, until then, namaste and much love.